I'm Alan Spears with Occupy Democrats, and in some stunning breaking news, J.D. Vance, along with the rest of the Trump campaign, are in total damage control right now, as a recent interview with the governor of Minnesota, Tim Waltz, just revealed the utter hypocrisy and destructive nature of J.D. Vance. Now, as many of you are very well aware, Vance is having a very bad week as a number of different statements and interviews he's conducted, as well as several accusations, have resurfaced and Vance is in total damage control right now. In fact, in a recent survey conducted by Punchbowl News, we've learned that 80% of Republicans actually disapproved of J.D. Vance being Trump's running mate. It would actually seem that Governor Glenn Youngkin from Virginia was the favored candidate for Trump to pick. However, uh, it would appear Republicans are left disappointed. Now, Vance's disapproval among Republicans, along with the rest of the world, uh, comes from a variety of different points. However, probably most prominently comes from an interview Vance did with Tucker Carlson on Fox News that he really, really doesn't want anyone to see or hear ever again. So take a look and see what he had to say. Look, what I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I just wanted to ask that question. Now, after this interview has resurfaced, Vance did offer an apology, though it was about as backhanded as you can imagine. Take a listen for yourself. Obviously, it was a sarcastic comment. I've got nothing against cats. I've got nothing against dogs. I've got one dog at home and I love him, Megan. But look, th th this is not, people are focusing so much on the sarcasm and not on the substance of what I actually said. In the well, that is a pretty inappropriate statement for a whole wide variety of different reasons. First off, a couple might have a medical condition that prevents them from holding a viable pregnancy, or perhaps one of those partners are infertile. Second off, you absolutely don't need to have children to have a vested interest in this country. That's absolutely absurd. You live in this country. You do not need to have a child to care about the country's current state or its future. You could be an aunt or an uncle to a niece or nephew that you are heavily invested in and have helped raise. You could be um, a foster parent. You could have adopted your child. They're not your biological child, but that doesn't make them any less yours. Do you, do you see how utterly ridiculous this notion is? This old cat lady shtick is an old trope that absolutely needs to die and is a relic of a bygone era that clearly Vance and the rest of the Republicans are interested in reviving and keeping around. Vance and the Republicans are now saying their quiet thoughts out loud in that if you don't have biological children of your own and raise them to be Christian Republicans and act and talk the exact way that the rest of them do, well, you're worthless to them. You are a detriment to this country and you should get out or your opinions are meaningless. Now, there has been a ton of speculation and rumors swirling around Trump's campaign that he may even be looking to replace Vance as his running mate and Possibly the final nail in the coffin was the interview that Tim Waltz conducted earlier today. In the interview, Waltz absolutely destroys Vance and his hypocrisy about leaning into his uh, more rural and hillbilly upbringing while also simultaneously uh, trying to work to undermine those that are in more rural or poverty-stricken areas and trying to cut down any help or support systems they might have. Take a look and see for yourself what the governor of Minnesota had to say as Vance and the Trump campaign scramble and go into full-on damage control. How are you going to build a water treatment plant in a town of 400 if you don't have a collective effort at it? So I have to tell you, they scream socialism. We just build roads and we build schools and we build prosperity into this. Their whole plan is to go backwards, to give tax cuts to the wealthy. And look, it was so surprising, you know, these super successful Donald Trump who inherited $400 million and then proceeded to fail at everything. Uh, middle America, you earn it, but you know what? You're not on your own. Neighbors help neighbors. And, and I will, uh, this one bothers me. I heard you talking about punching back at the bullies. They see people less fortunate as scapegoats and, and you know, punchlines for their mm -hmm. jokes. We see them as neighbors. And I said it with my mom, my dad dies when my little brother's young, we're teenagers. We get Social Security survivor benefits. I'm all for pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. We didn't have any boots. Social Security was the boots and we pulled ourselves up and we paid that back. And I think J.D. Vance gets none of that. You know, it's, it's the aw shucks, I'm from here or whatever. So uh, my hillbilly cousins did not go to Yale, but I'll tell you what they did. They contributed to our community and they're proud of it. 
Look out for your neighbors. Stop being weird. Uh, the Governor Tim Walz way of way of politicking. We, we love to hear it. Thank you so much, Governor. For far too long, Republicans like Vance or like Trump and so many others have criticized and demonized people who are less fortunate, who are uh, struggling with poverty or in more rural areas, and they don't have the means to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Struggling in life does not immediately mean that you are lazy or not willing to work. It could be any number of reasonable explanations, such as you got let go from a job or you experienced a medical emergency and now are taking on mountains of debt. There are so many valid and justifiable reasons as to why individuals may be struggling financially or need support from their neighbors. That doesn't make them lazy or lesser. It just means they're human and they're struggling with a problem that they want to overcome. But it would seem that that most people in the country are waking up to the fact that J.D. Vance is actually a very terrible person and his polling numbers are reflecting this. I fully expect over the coming days and the coming weeks that the distance will only continue to grow between Trump and Vance and in a few weeks time perhaps Trump will probably drop Vance as he is quickly proving to be more of a liability than an asset. But that is good news for us as Harris's campaign is off to a fantastic start and fully energized as we recently received the endorsement of former President Barack Obama. Fantastic news. And Harris will soon be announcing her vice presidential pick as well. So keep subscribed, keep informed, stick around with Occupied Democrats as we'll keep you updated.